well, we don't go to we you don't go out to eat that much anymore, right? I mean, for for three years, the, it was illegal. The government said it's illegal to go out to Chili's, so you know you, you can't just do that. But now that we're back, you know, I, I think you don't see enough of people like kind of tipping the maitre d in the front. But what you know, the 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 guy or the the lady, the 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 person who seats you at the table, you know, you you get a better seat. You, you slip them a twenty. You slip them a ten. Something. Well, sure. Take a place like TGI Fridays. You know, you're going to say, oh, well, Steve, there are no nice tables there. Aha. Uh -huh. But sometimes, you know, you're not paying attention. You get the half booth, half table. So you get some people that don't want to be in a booth, right? They'd rather have the, the chair spread around more room. You're good. But then some people don't want to sit in a chair. They go just for the booth. So, you know, you get that table where it's half and half. You don't just get that. You know, you, you give them the money. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to talk about why you probably shouldn't uh, enroll a personal Windows device in Intune, and we're going to talk about everything that goes along with that. No, me personally, it doesn't matter. I don't even like going out to eat, so it doesn't even matter to me. I eat, I'll eat home. Get Rubix, solving for the modern workplace. All right, so we've looked at a lot of different enrollment methods uh, throughout our time together. I think it's important to understand, you know, the difference between corporate enrollment and personal enrollment for Windows. So corporate enrollment is going to come from uh, a corporate path, right? That's going to be your hybrid join, uh, maybe group policy enrollment. If you have uh, system center, you're going to have co-management, obviously autopilot. We've looked at provisioning packages. If you have device enrollment managers where they're bulk enrolling devices, these are all corporate methods. But what is personal enrollment and how does that work? Okay, well, first of all, before we do anything, uh, you're not going to have to worry about this if you're blocking personal enrollment. So when I go to devices enrollment and I go to device platform restrictions, right here, you're going to be able to tell if you're already blocking this or not. This is at a at a tenant level. So when I go to properties, uh, you're going to see the different platforms. So Windows MDM, I'm allowing Windows MDM, but I'm also allowing personal. Now, typically I would have this to block, but just because if it was blocked, you know, story over we're just don't have to worry about it but in this case we're allowing it so now it is possible things can come in the next piece is the automatic enrollment now i typically believe we should block personal and leave this on all that will eliminate most of our issues for corporate enrollment autopilot gpo co-management not gonna have to worry about that you know again for the the this particular purpose i'm gonna leave kind of everything wide open just so we can understand what happens. So now that we see how the tenant has to be set up, the next question is, how does somebody enroll a, a, one of their personal devices? Well, a lot of times this happens without someone even knowing it. Uh, very rarely will folks take their personal uh, gaming PC or home PC and, and enroll it into, into themselves. So there's a specific set of actions that have to happen. Okay, so one of the most common ones is folks who buy a PC that's Windows 10 Pro and are prompted with, did I say 10? I meant 11. Let's go with 11. If you buy a Windows 11 PC that comes with Windows 11 Pro, you're going to be prompted with this, set for personal use or set for work and school. Now, if I set for work and school here and go through it, that's going to be a personal enrollment because I'm using my work email to enroll a personal device. I bought this. It didn't come from the company. But let's say I'm smart enough to know to set it up for personal use and I go through that. Okay, so one of the most common ways folks will enroll a device personally is by doing something like this. I'm gonna sign into OneDrive and I'm gonna do it as Rick Jones at rubixdev.com. Now what happens is because I started that process, I've automatically kicked off the work sign-in. And again, this is a personal device. I mean, just to show you my local user, it's just me. I made an account named Steve, just like I would like on a gaming PC or something, right? Uh, user Steve, that's me. If we go to settings, I didn't use a Microsoft account or anything. So that's kind of it. But when users sign into Office 365, OneDrive, Teams, if you allow that, this is what they get. And this is the most common way they do it. So, um, I, you know, they don't always read the thing. 
allow my organization to manage device, sign into this app only. So here's the deal with this part. If you are going to do this, and for some reason your company allows you to use a personal device and sign into OneDrive or sign into Teams, you're going to uncheck this and click no, sign into this app only. Not going to touch OK, and you're not going to leave that checked. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be John Q. Everyman and leave everything alone and hit OK. So I'm a user. I want OneDrive. I don't read and I click OK. This is the problem. Hold on. We'll register the device with your company and apply policy. Yeah. See, so you're all set. You now have uh, access to your organization's company and uh, yeah, so there's my OneDrive folder. So the user doesn't really know. They just think, okay, I set up my OneDrive folder and I got my stuff syncing, okay? But I wanna show you what's actually happening back here. Look at this. The Microsoft Intune Management Extension was installed. I'm gonna go to All Settings. I'm gonna go to Accounts, Work School. Okay, I can see that that's there, not a big deal. Managed by Rubik's Dev, Info. This is an Intune device and it is syncing. So I'm going to hop over to the entry portal here and we're going to go to devices and all devices, desktop, IB, what is it called? I H there it is. T B a three I. So let's look at some things. It's not intra joined. It's Microsoft Entra registered, but it is enrolled in Intune. Okay. And if we hit manage, it should take us there. Even if Intune, oh, yep, here it is in Intune. Now look at the ownership. It is personal. I can see the hardware information about the device. It's not encrypted. Enrollment, do we have any information about enrollment? No, we don't. Group membership, it's not in any groups. And let's look at device configuration, nothing here. Now the reason I'm getting so lucky and things aren't hitting my device just automatically is because I don't really have anything assigned to all devices. If I did, I'd be screwed, right? And that's why it's so important we use the group tags for things. So just a device, and I've said this all the time and some folks can't really see it, but the point is just by existing in my Intune tenant or by being Entra registered, I can't have policy or apps automatically assigned to it. You can see I have apps assigned as available to all users. So already that that's a problem. Um, but speaking of problems, it's just gonna get worse from here on out for both the user and the admin. So if for some reason I decide that, you know, I wanna take this device and put it in a group, which I should be able to pretty easily. Let's do that actually. Let's do groups, new group. I'm gonna call it Rick's Gaming PC, just because. And I'm gonna add a member, desktop, I, there it is. I'm going to put it in a group and create the group. So now what happens if I decide to push an app to, uh, to the device? Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to do the Dell command update because why not? And, uh, screw it. I'm going to make right now it's available. I'm going to make this a required assignment for Rick and his gaming PC. But let's look at some other things that could be kind of dangerous. I can run remediations on the device, right? And PowerShell will get you a lot of things that you probably wouldn't want to do to someone's personal device. Probably the things that are on top of your mind, things that are really, really bad are wipe commands. I can wipe someone's device and that's very dangerous. Now, what's also very dangerous is if I go to the properties, I can change this to corporate. So the implications are now I will fully own this device, right? Dell command update installed successfully. Well, now our Dell app is here that we didn't want. Uh, let's go ahead and look in the registry now and see what we can see. Luckily, I could still run it as an administrator. If I go to local machine, software, Microsoft, and we're gonna go down to policy manager, ADMX current device. Look at all this. I have data protection policy. I have health monitoring. I have Firefox policy coming from, you know, the Rubik's tenant. I have some security stuff. So this is really not good. Uh, <laughs> you know, it just didn't sync back yet, but I'm going to be kind of, uh, you know, my functionality is going to ultimately be limited 
And of course, the big question, because there's some back and forth on the Microsoft documentation of can the device be wiped? You know, what would happen if we did that? So we're actually going to go ahead and do it. And it's still personal. And in a perfect world, that should not be allowed on personal. But I am going to wipe it. And we are going to see what happens here. Look at that. Well, we just wiped Rick's device. Here's the thing, that's worst case scenario. And I wanna be very clear. I don't believe there's malicious intent on either side of the user or the admin, right? It's not hard to accidentally self-enroll. And for admins managing thousands, tens of thousands of PCs, they might not see if something's personally enrolled and shows up. Um, so what do we do, right, for this? Well. I'm going to show you some automation in a future episode of what we can do to track personal devices and offboard them, right? Just get them out of there. And what we're really going to need to do is set up some comms to the user. Of course, first thing is first, you should block personal enrollment for Windows. I have not seen a good use case for it yet. You know, and if, if anything, there are cases where organizations might want to, uh, have contractors or temporary hires and and maybe they can't supply them a physical pc whether it's logistics or the cost but that's where windows 365 comes in right i can say hey use your own mac pc chromebook and i'm going to send you credentials to securely log in to a pc that's in our cloud that's managed with intune and i don't need to touch your personal stuff right everything kind of stays in there and it's containerized so um, I guess step one is don't allow personal enrollment, but if you do and it gets in there, you could just see the complications on both sides. So sometimes folks think about it. Maybe we don't want to allow it. Maybe we don't. It's never a good idea. Hopefully, uh, and I did a video on the app protection for Windows, which is mainly the Edge browser right now, but that's still better, right? If you want to use Office and email, it'll force you into the browser and, and you can't do anything else. So there are other options. And hopefully as that matures, you know, we'll be able to continue to talk about it. But in the meantime, I just don't do personal devices. And we'll be seeing you.